look at uh, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And when they came nigh or near to Jerusalem under Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither, or send him here. And they went their way and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met, and they loose him. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye? Loosing the colt. And they said unto them that even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches of the trees and strawed them in the way. And they that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now the eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. And would not suffer, that means permit, that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called the house, sorry, shall be called of all nations the house of prayer? But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the scribes and uh, chief priests heard it, and saw how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city, and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called to remembrance, uh, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree, which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily or truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith uh, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have ought or anything against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye uh, do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And they come to, uh, again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, there came to him the chief priests and, and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? 
Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Mark chapter 12. And he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set an hedge about it and digged a place for the wine fat and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country and at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them uh, other, another servant and at them, at him, he cast stones and wounded him in the head and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved, he sent him also last uh, unto him, them, saying they will reverence my son. But those husbandmen uh, said among themselves, this is the heir, come. Let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. This reminds us of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father. You see, the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? He can be this afternoon. What you need to do is come in repentance toward God. That's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. This is the will of God, that we might be saved, that we might not go down to hell. God does not want any of us to go down to hell, my friend. And that's why I'm here, to give you another opportunity to get right with God, to have forgiveness for your sins and a home in heaven through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And they took him, and this is the uh, only begotten son, only beloved, well beloved son, they took him and killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandman and will give the vineyard unto others. Now this is a parable speaking about the Jews actually. The Jews had rejected their Messiah. They rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. They did not recognize him for who he really is. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's the one that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why not do that now? Why not get right with God now? Receive forgiveness for your sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's either heaven or hell. What will it be for you? It's all determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord sh shall be saved. And have you not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. He's talking about himself here. He's the head of the corner. He's the one that the builders rejected. And now, he's been made the head of the corner, my friend. There's no one higher than the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who died upon the cross could be your saviour today. I wonder, will you come in repentance and faith? 
acknowledge you as sinner before God, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Wonderful thing to know that your soul is saved, you're on your way to heaven, through the finished work and the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your Saviour, or will he have to be your judge? And they sought to lay hands on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men. You see, God is no respecter of persons, but teach us the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? In other words, should we be paying taxes to the government? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. Now the proof, the Lord Jesus Christ was poor when he was upon earth. He was poor. He's the creator of the whole universe, and yet he was poor. He came, he was rich, and yet for our sakes he became poor, that we, through his poverty, might be rich. God wants to give you eternal life. And this life is found in, not in a man-made religion. Man-made religion will take us down to hell, my friend. You need to come to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And no, God is not our Father. We need to be brought again into God's family through faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So he said here, and they brought it, this is a penny, and he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, or leave and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. In other words, to keep the surname going. Now there were seven brethren, in other words, seven brothers, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed, and the second took her and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise, and the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the Scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. One of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe uh, said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, 
For there is one God and there is none other but He. And to love Him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love His neighbour as Himself is more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. In other words, no one dared to ask him any more questions after he had uh, said these words. Jesus answered and said while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, from whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And I hope that you're uh, content to hear the words of the Lord Jesus this afternoon, because they are words of life. That's why the Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. I wonder, do you have the Son of God? Have you believed on him for your eternal salvation? And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplaces and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. Jesus sat over against the treasury and be, uh, beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily or truly I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. And so it's not the point that uh, how much people put in, it's how much people have really got left. That's the whole point. Now I wonder, do you and I realize that we are on our way down to hell by default? And this is a, this is a, a reality, my friend. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because we're sinners when we're born in this world, we're going down to hell and God does not want that for you, my friend. He wants you to be in heaven with himself for all of eternity. But we cannot be there apart from faith in Jesus Christ. We've got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to be in heaven. Without that faith in him, we'll be in hell. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind, simply agree with God that you are a sinner, and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. This is God's desire for you this afternoon, my friend, that you would be saved, that you would receive forgiveness for your sins through the precious blood of Christ that was shed on the cross of Calvary when he was crucified for you and for me. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried but praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. I wonder, is your soul saved? Are you on your way to heaven? Or are you still on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? God does not want that for you, my friend. As I said, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on the Lord Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Here's the reason. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way of salvation. He said, and only he could say, I am the way, not a way, the way, the only way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And no, we're not God's children until we've been born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you receive Christ this afternoon and become a child of God? The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It's either heaven or hell, and your eternal destiny is determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a wise choice. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Remember, in whom we have redemption, through his blood even, the forgiveness of sins. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening. Have a nice night.